Hello dear friends, may God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit, oh the Holy Spirit, without the Spirit of God, it's impossible for us to understand His Holy Word. It's impossible. That's why this world is lost because many people read the Word of God but they don't understand it. And then you may ask, but it is God who obstructs, it's He who prevents a person from understanding His Word because He gives His Word to be understood, right? But the problem is that God, dear friends, I believe, I think this way, I believe that God chooses the humble ones, the simple ones, those who are lost, those who are nothing, those who consider themselves the leftovers of this world, those who were born without mother or father, let's put it this way, those who were tossed into this world, those who didn't have the love of the father, and let alone of the mother, people who had no reference of what a family is. They don't know what a family is like. They've heard of it, but they don't know what it is. So God chose those who are humble, those who are humble, humble. If you want to know a person who is humble, look at a child. You are going to see humility is the one that God appreciates, a humble person, that just like a child, they accept, they listen, they receive the word, and they obey it, even without understanding, without questioning, without asking, but why this, why that? No, a child, when we speak to them, when an adult teaches a child, they receive that teaching and practice without knowing how this is going to end up because they are humble. God chooses the humble people of this world, those who are arrogant and proud, those who think they are someone, they consider themselves intelligent and capable and victorious and etc. These people, he leaves them aside because he does not want anyone to glory themselves before him. All the honor, all the glory, all the praise, all the majesty and greatness belongs to him. He alone is worthy of it, nobody else. We are mere, mere, let's say, let's say people who unfortunately are the rubbish of this world. That's the reality before the greatness of God. So I think that the criteria God uses to choose people those who will receive the Holy Spirit are those who accept His Holy Word. Yesterday we spoke about the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom. Meaning that when a person fears God and walks in His ways and obeys His Word, this person will be blessed, will be happy. But it's God who guides. It's God who gives us the fear. I would say that He gives the hunger, the desire to eat, and the food as well. However, 
the humble ones and only the humble ones are blessed. Jesus said that the first teaching of the Lord Jesus there on the Mount of Beatitudes, he said, blessed are the humble in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So, when a person accepts the word of God and they fear, I mean, they obey this word, they acknowledge and obey, even though they don't understand much, but they, they obey because it's the word of God. So this person is humble. They fear God. And when a person fears God, they go get baptized in water, seeking to truly have a new life, truly wanting to start again, bearing their nature, their Adamic nature, their fleshly nature in the water. When they get baptized in water, they have to do so repeatedly repentant from their sins, from their wrong lifestyle. So when they get baptized in water with this intention, then when they come out of the water, they start to live a new life. The life which God wants them to have. And then, yes, they receive the Holy Spirit. So the protocol, the protocol that we must follow to receive the Holy Spirit is, firstly, the baptism with water. But the baptism with water must be with repentance. The person has to repent. They don't have to get baptized in water to receive the Holy Spirit but they have to repent first in order to go get baptized in water and bury their old nature. And then when they come out of the water, they have the privilege, the right to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So you who have been saying, Oh, come on, I've done so much and I still haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit. I took part in fasts of Daniel. I have fasted of food and drink and I've done this and that and purposes and campaigns of Israel. I've done everything. I still don't have the Holy Spirit. Why is it? It's because you, imagine you, you continue with the same nature. You still have the same thoughts you still have the same ideas, the same intentions. You dive, I mean, the pastor lower you down into the water and nothing happens because you, you are just a sinner that went down the waters with sins and came out with sins, wet and with sins. So there has to be repentance. If there is no repentance, you are not going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And the water baptism won't be valid either. That's the reality. But when a person goes to the water baptism, repentant, no, I don't want my life this way anymore. I'm tired of being myself. I want to bury. I repent from my past. And repentance is not a feeling. It's not for you to feel that sensation, that emotion, and cry. No. Repentance is a decision. It's like the fear of God. The fear of God is not a feeling. It's a decision. You obey His word because it's His word. It's the word of God. You fear God and you will obey, you honor him. And the same happens with repentance. Repentance is a decision. 
you repent from the wrong life that you are living. And you know that. You know that it's wrong. And then, when you are baptized with water, then because you repented, then all of your sins that you repented from are buried there in the water. And when you come out of the baptism pool, you are a new person. And then the Holy Spirit comes and descends upon you. This is the protocol. Jesus was baptized in water, but Jesus didn't have sins. He didn't have to repent. But he got baptized in water. He was baptized by John the Baptist to fulfill the word, the law. He wanted, he wanted to get baptized even though he didn't have any sin. So he didn't need repentance because he had no sin. And it was characterized there in his baptism that God approved him. When Jesus got baptized in water, heavens were open. And they could hear a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So this has to happen to you, dear friends. This has to happen to you. If it doesn't happen, then it didn't happen. If the baptism, if your baptism in water didn't count then you are going to be in the church, participating in the Lord's Supper, participating of the doctrine of the church. But you are still a stranger in the nest. You continue to be the same because there was no repentance. Repentance, dear friends, I repeat, is a decision. I decide. I decide to stop lying. I decide to stop sleeping around. I decide to stop living my old lifestyle, the wrong life I was living to start a new life. I cannot do that. Only God can perform this miracle in me. But I can make the decision to leave my old life behind. So when you are baptized in water, that's it. God confirms that or he testifies, he seals that decision of yours with the death of your old person, your old being stays buried in the water. And when you come out of the waters, immediately you will start to live in newness of life. When the Apostle Paul, used by the Holy Spirit, said that those who are in Christ a new creation is because they died to the world. They died to themselves. They died to their dreams. They died. They're dead. And those who died, they're dead. You bury them and that's it. And that's how it happens with a person who repents. It's a decision. I repent from the wrong life I was living, etc., etc. So the baptism is the solution. The water baptism is the solution to bury all of your past. And when you come out of the waters and the, the pastor is the one who raises you out of the water, then naturally heavens are open upon your life and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And once you have the Holy Spirit, you receive him who is the mind of the Lord Jesus. Pay attention. The Holy Spirit is the mind of of the Lord Jesus. So when you receive the mind of Christ, 
which is the Holy Spirit, then He will guide you according to His will. If you continue, if you remain humble, accepting, submitting yourself, your life to His word, I believe that this answers the questions of many people that say, oh, I've bent over backwards to receive the Holy Spirit, and I still don't have Him. I've been in the church for 30, 50 years. I'm in the church for 47 years, and I still haven't received the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you haven't repented. You have not repented. And if you are waiting to feel something in order to repent, you never repent because it doesn't depend on a feeling. It's like marriage. When you get married, it's a decision. It's not a feeling. You love the other person and vice versa. So how is this love materialized? One giving their life on earth to the other, as long as they live. It's a decision. It's a decision. Many do not get married. They do not want to get married. Why? Because they do not want to have a commitment. They want to be free. No, I don't want to get married. I want to be free. And the day that it doesn't work anymore, we go our separate ways. That's it. I mean, this it also this also can apply to the baptism in water. People get baptized in water. Oh, let me try. Let me see. I have to get baptized. It's the doctrine of the church. It's the biblical doctrine. So I obey it. But they do not make the decision to abandon their old life. The same thing. You get married, but you don't want to stop being single. You want to continue acting as though you are single. Of course your marriage won't work. It's a pretense. It's fake, isn't it? How many women say, oh, my husband married me. We got married and all. And he continues to live as a single man. Saturday, he wants to go play soccer. Saturday, he wants to go play soccer. Sunday, he wants to go to the club. He wants to go watch the game somewhere else. How about me? I am here by myself. Come on. My husband, he leaves the house and he spends the weekend having fun out, out there. And I'm, I'm here, excluded from his life. Is it a marriage? No, it's not. Marriage involves a decision. The same thing with the water baptism. It's a decision. You repent sincerely. Okay, I repent. So, you will bury. The pastor will bury this old nature of yours. Your old nature. You decided to sacrifice your ways, your habits, your single life. Right? You sacrificed it. So now I want to follow Jesus. I want to walk according to his holy word. Then, yes, you will receive the Holy Spirit straight away as you get baptized. This is very important, dear friends. Excuse me. This is extremely important. Such a small decision, but so important, so deep, because just as in marriage, people, people want to go to the altar, isn't it? Everyone wants to get married in the church, on the altar, usually, on the altar, the altar of their God, let's put it this way. And then what happens? Why do they want to marry on the altar? Because they want the blessing from God. So, the person goes to the altar. But there are people who do not believe in God. They don't believe in anything. So, oh, I, we don't need to get married. 
on the yacht. We can just move in together and that's it. We are already married. But that's not a marriage. Why? Because that, let's say, that union was not done according to God, according to the principles of faith. Why? Because they get married without any commitment. Well, if I marry Esther without being committed to her, come on, I will continue being single. And so will she. There is no marriage there. So marriage is a commitment, it's a decision. The same thing is the water baptism. Before you get baptized, you who want to get baptized, you have to evaluate, did you repent from your sins? Did you repent? So, okay. And pay attention. Repentance, I repeat, is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It's not remorse. It's a decision. I repent. Consciously, you repent from the life you were living. So, you are living a life without any order, like a single person. You had no commitment, no obligation with anyone. So, you lived according to your will. However, from the moment that you want to have a commitment with God, you fear God, you want and you want to save your soul, then you are going to walk according to the word, the thoughts of the Most High. So this is marriage. It's a covenant with God. You don't see God, but He sees you. So you... Even though you don't see him, even though you don't touch him, even though you don't feel him, but you believe. It's a belief, it's a faith, which God himself placed inside of you. He gave you this faith for you to decide, for you to choose to marry him or to continue as a single person. The water baptism is this. You decide to abandon the old life, that life, that night life, that messy life with friends and people you know without any commitment with anyone. But in that day, you say, I want it, my father. I want to belong only to you. This is very nice. I want you to be my husband. I want to do your will. I want to serve you. I want to be your helper. I want to serve you as an instrument to do your will here on earth. Then yes, the Holy Spirit comes after the baptism. You repented, you go to the waters. And then when you come out of the waters, just as it happened to Jesus, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, heavens are open upon your life, over your head, and you, and you only, hear the voice of God that now considers you his child. This is my beloved child. Meaning, God rejoices with your surrender, total and unconditional surrender. You left that single life behind, you sacrificed your lovers, and now your life belongs only to Him. Jesus said, He said, listen, I did not come to call the righteous. I didn't come to save those who are already saved. 
No. He says like this, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I have not come to call the righteous. And then he said once as well, I didn't come to those who are well. They don't need a physician, but those who are sick. I came to those who are sick. I came to those who find themselves lost, those who have no one for them, those who have been despised by everything and everyone, those who don't have a mother, a father, those who, I mean, those who are lost out there. I came for these people. This is very nice. Jesus said that he, he said that there is more joy in heaven over a sinner who repents than 99 righteous people in this world. So the greater joy in heaven is when one sinner repents. The problem the problem is that not everyone wants it. Not everyone wants to accept the invitation from the Lord Jesus. Not everyone wants to marry him. Not everyone wants to submit to his will. The majority does not want to do it. And that's why this world is such a mess. Mess, disorder. The world is like this, a chaos, because people do not want to fear God. Those who rebel against Him, those who want to do their own will, they want to follow their desires, their lusts. And then, how can God work in the life of these people? Many people say, oh, if God existed, He would not leave me here as hostage of this depression, this horrible life I live. What does God have to do with that? He gave you life. He gave you freedom. But you don't want to accept Him. You don't want to accept Him. You don't want to submit to Him, to His will, to His word. Then He cannot do anything for you. You don't want to marry Him, so how can He be your husband? You don't want to commit yourself to Him, so how can He be committed to you? You don't want to honor Him, how do you want Him to honor you? Oh, come on, dear friends. Let's, let's be honest. That's the reality. So God knows beforehand those who are humble, and to these the Lord gives the gift of repentance. Those who truly accept, they believe. No, I accept. I, I don't want to be far from you, Lord. When a person manifests this sincere desire, then they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And once receiving the Holy Spirit, they start to have the mind of Christ and consequently the mind of the Lord Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, will guide them every day for the rest of their life here on earth until the moment that they enter heaven. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.